everybody, this is AJ Haynes here bringing you the new update to Image to Plane. This is Image to Plane version 2.0. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about the new features. I'm not going to waste any time, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to go up here and click on the icon, and right away you're going to notice that the interface looks quite a bit different than 1.0. There's a lot of new options here and I'm just gonna go over them all briefly in this little overview and then there's gonna be a part two where I go over the new image to plane effector which uh, is really fun to play around with so there's quite a bit you can do with it so right now let's just talk about the other features and instead of just boring you with kind of all the tedious details and talking about it I'm gonna do a quick import and then kind of go over the features that way so, and right off the bat, you probably noticed not only the interface difference, but also that it popped up with values already set inside of it. And that's because one of the new options is to save as default, so, which was actually a user requested feature. So now you can set all your values the way you like them. I typically use the same values every time too, so that's a nice feature to use. So you don't have to re-enter them every time you open the plugin. And of course, if you don't like them, you can just reset everything back to zero. Um, the one that stays checked is the no grid option. That, And what that does is, by default, last time everything came in with the default 20 by 20 segments. And the no grid option just puts it to a one by one, which is all you need to make a plane. So, And makes things a lot more efficient. And it really, really increases viewport performance when you're loading say 500 images you just don't need all those segments so but there are a few you know advantages to unchecking that which I, I'll probably show in the next video so um, let's get rid of that there so let's just do a quick import max plane height I'm gonna set to 500 and I'll explain that when everything comes in let's line it up with a gap of 20 and one of the new features here, max files, which grabs the certain number of files from a folder. So the folder I'm grabbing from is about 300 images. So I just want to grab 25 images from that folder. And I'm going to randomize the images it grabs. By default, if that's unchecked, it'll grab the 25 first images in the folder. So I want that on. And I'm not going to click set dimensions. That's a new option. but. Um, I just want to show the varying widths and heights of the images. If this is on, you can set the plane dimensions of all the images that come in, um, which you know might be useful if all the images are the same aspect ratio, say they're LHD aspect ratios. Maybe some are 965-40, some are 1280, some are 1080, and they're all kind of a mix and match. You can set them all to the same plane height. I want I don't want materials only. If that's checked, basically it'll ignore all the other options but these next three buttons. And it'll also take into account the image filter. But I do want my material I do want the planes. I don't want materials only. I do want to disable the specular. I don't want to add it to the alpha channel. If the images do have alpha channels, it will add it right to the alpha material. I do want to add it to the luminance channel of the plane, of the uh, materials. And we have the new Im uh, option to parent under the cloner or the null now. So that's a great option that you don't have to drag everything into a cloner. So, But I am going to import it right into a null this time just to show you. And we'll leave no grid on. I'm going to leave that unchecked. I'll talk about that more later. And now we have an option to name the parent that all the planes come in under. You have the option to name it the folder name, which was always the default in 1.0, but now you have the option to set it, set the username or set the parent name yourself, which, you know, obviously you could uh, rename the parent to anything you want, but there's a few new options, which I'll show you when I import here that might make this username useful, so. Right now, we'll just leave it the folder name, and I'm not going to go over image filter in depth. We did that a little bit more in the 1.0 video, but basically it just allows you to filter the images that come in 
based on their file extension. Like if you just wanted JPEGs, you could type in JPEG there and it would bring in only the JPEGs if you hit only. So let's leave that. Um, all right, so everything else is good here. So let's select the folder, random files, just a folder of 300 images roughly, but we're only gonna bring in 25. So you'll see it working down here, loading the images. And there they are. Let's bring that down. Kind of hide that. Just some random inspiration images. So you'll see it loaded the 25 and back to the console there. I've loaded a few times, but um, you can see it tells you exactly how long it took and how many files were loaded. So we got there 25 images and they all are one by one with segment within height segments They're in the random files parent and another thing you're going to notice is there are two new layers I got created when I imported those and this is one of my favorite new features because if I'm importing tons of planes say like 500 images your material editor gets just cluttered up with all kinds of materials. So now that everything comes in, the materials are tagged separately of the planes, so you can hide them separately if you want to. Um, you can just uncheck that layer and they all go away. Say I create a couple of new materials and that's kind of jumbled in with all the other stuff. Just hit either no layer for all the new stuff you create or you know you can hit all and then just uncheck that layer as well so you don't have to look at all those materials and the same can be done for the planes I mean obviously you could you know uh, fold the parent but if you didn't want them in there you could just uncheck the material manager and hide everything and they all came in with their gap of 20 which is great everything was working perfectly oh and the max height so um, the larger images got scaled down to a maximum height of 500, which a lot of them were obviously pretty big then because they're all lining up and the smaller guys just stay the same size that they were. So perfect. So real quick, I'm just going to show you guys just a real basic overview, of real basic look at the image to plane effector. It's just a Python effector that can be applied to any cloner and we'll show you what it does here. So um, lineup basically doesn't apply when you're going to use the cloner so set that to zero. Uh, we'll up the plane height a little bit to 600. We'll set the max files a little higher. Let's go 75. Keep them random. Everything else looks good. Cloner. No grid. Let's just set a username as well. Alright, and we'll just hit the folder again. We'll see it loading down there. Flying by, and there's all of our planes. Right away you'll see only three planes, and you'll wonder why you don't see them all. That's because the cloner's default count is set to three so as you increase the count you'll see more of your images so if we want all of our images we'll just have to set this to 75 and if you go over 75 it just starts back from from one it starts back to the first plane so and you'll see that they're all lined up and that's exactly what the image to plane effector does is it tries to keep the distance between all the planes um, butted up right against each other and if you do want a gap all you gotta do is come into the object tab and go to the X amount and increase that and you'll get an even gap between all the images which is awesome no more having to deal with the lineup and say you didn't like the gap you know you had to delete all the planes and re-import but now you can interactively set that and you'll see that everything got tagged in the name this is uh, why I kind of why I made the username options because then you can tag everything the same 
and if you don't always want it named the name of the folder so you don't have to go and change everything and this also works with grid mode so it looks kind of jumbled by default there's some values already set so let's set it to zero and let's just increase the height width, and you'll see that each row is lined up right next to the image next to it so you can increase the gap here as well and then just increase the, the count and you're gonna get a lot of images so um, that is the basic overview of image to plane effector I'm gonna go into more detail in the next video I hope you guys like all the new features in image to plane 2.0 I'm really really psyched about them a lot of the features are huge time savers over the first one. Obviously a lot more flexibility to get images into cinema really quickly. I hope you guys enjoy and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.